Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech, and today we are going to be taking a look at the Mars SLA 3D printer. So let's get started. Elgu was nice enough to send me this 3D printer as a product for a product review, and that's what I'm here to do today. Now, I always wanted an SLA 3D printer, and I wanted one for a very long time. But I was a little discouraged because there was a lot more things you need to do than a standard filament 3D printer. Here's a disclaimer. There's a dis disadvantage and an advantage to this. Disadvantage is that I am new to SLA printing. Um, all my knowledge actually just comes from Sexy Cyborg and Maker Muse. So I got a good idea on how to operate and run this guy. Uh, the advantage is because I'm so new at this, I could see how intuitive and how easy it is to kind of run an SLA printer. So this is like a perfect project. All right, so included in the 3D printer kit, you get this 3D printer, this UV protective shield, and a little toolkit. So I'm gonna show you guys what we have in here. First, you start off with uh, gloves. It gives you like a handful of gloves. You, you definitely wanna pick up more gloves. A little cup. Uh, the AC DC adapter for the guy, Allen wrench, more Allen wrench with screws, probably to hold the board up. Uh, we got snips, which if you got 3D printers, you probably have all these tools ready, but you got more snips just to cut off the filament, a little tiny plastic spatula, uh, filters. So when you pour the resin back into the bottle, you, you use these filters. So you can pick these up. And they're like coffee filters as well. They have a little filter at the end and masks. Now this does give off a lot of smells. So I'm gonna tell you, I'm not sure what smells yet, but I'm, I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit later. On the printer itself, we've got this UV shield and a print bed of 12 millimeters by 6.8 millimeters by 15.8 millimeters height. It's a small size compared to a filament printer, but it's a decent size compared to SLA printers. The resolution on this guy is actually really high. It's a 2K LED screen underneath this. So you get a resolution of 0.047. Now this guy's not light. This is all made like metal chassis and everything. So it's like about 11 pounds according to the book, but it is pretty heavy. So right now I can't install this yet until I lift this up. So I'm gonna power this guy on and let's see what the screen says and all that stuff. So on the back, you actually have the power outlet and also a USB. So you can stick the USB um, G-code and stuff like that in the back. They do use their own software to take the G-code or take the um, STL and then convert it into their code for their box. So you're gonna have to use their software for this. Okay, let's power this guy on and let's see what the screen says. It's got a pretty loud fan noise going on. You got tool system and print. So. According to the instruction manual, what I'm supposed to do is actually lift this guy up. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to go into manual and lift it up by 10 millimeters. Just enough to kind of get it up. Let me get the Allen wrench ready just so I could tighten it up to level the bed. And they give you a lot of extra ones because I think I see them in here already. Yeah, they're, they're in there already. So how does this work? Also, it's a ball mount inside. I see how it is. So basically, you loosen up this to kind of loosen up the ball to allow the bottom to like free form. That's how you would level it. Slap this guy on. Okay, tighten this up so I know it's not gonna go anywhere. And kind of, I would say, lower this guy they said oh there's this there's this switch right over here to the right or to the left and that kind of gets it to the bottom now i need to center this platform to the lcd underneath hold this down and then basically tighten this up and that's it that's all you have to do to level it so i'm gonna tighten this guy up all right Tighten this one up as well. I can't really see. Yeah, seems to be pretty good. So that's level. It's touching the bottom. And that's basically it. I think I had to move this up 100 meters before it prints. So I'm going to move this up 10 times. 
So select 10 millimeter again. All right, this will give me enough space to pour the resin in there. So I just gotta make sure that there's no debris. So I'm just gonna take a little microfiber towel and kind of like pick up all the stuff that's underneath that might have fell in there, like styrofoam. Make sure I tighten up this bed so it doesn't move around, right? Is that how it works? Now to test, uh, I'm gonna get out of this menu, go to exposure, change this to three seconds. Let's delete three, hit enter, and then next. You should see a rectangular in there, and if it does, then you're good. All right, we tested out the printer. It seems like it's flashing everything that it needs to. And next up is to pour the liquid in and print. All right, so we are finally done. It definitely took a little bit longer than I expected, and I ran into not really issues, but uh, more of time constraints. All right, so I originally was gonna print what they gave me on the file, which was actually two of these big, rook looking like things and then as soon as i saw that it was going to be like three hours i was like okay let me step back a little change the model so i ended up using the software remodeling and printing out a brand new model for the rook but a lot smaller so i started working on that got that through and then realized it didn't matter how big the surface was it, it was the height that was the time so this ended up to be about an hour and a half. Even though it's faster than that, it, it didn't matter how big it was. So I ended up printing a smaller print. Let's get started and take this out and see where we're at with this. So let me put my face mask back on. Uh, to be honest, it doesn't smell too bad. I think it keeps, it does a pretty good job at keeping the, um, the smell away. It does have a fan. It's not obnoxiously loud, but it is loud. So here I am, I'm gonna take that off. And we're going to do the takeoff process and the cleaning process basically. So I'm going to see how intuitive this is. So far, I'm enjoying it. It's not, it's not hard. It's not difficult to run this machine. And for a beginner, like I have no idea what I was doing for SLA printing. I was able to manage to get this going, so it's not too bad. I purposely got this like baking tray because this actually fits like, you see I could just lean it off and it'll sit there. Now, next thing I do have is 91% uh, IPA. Anything above 90% should be able to remove the resin off the uh, mold. So that should be good. The quality on this thing is insane. There you go. All right, so sorry about the audio. Uh, my mic was actually off and now I'm just put, turning it back on and I might have had some really bad audio for like a first minute or so but I, I can't record it because I already did it here I have the mold in here um, I'm just gonna kind of run it in the liquid a little bit just to get the alcohol in there but as this is going on I am actually gonna put this liquid back into my bottle so let's move this off to the side I'm gonna let that sit in there for a little bit all right, as I'm doing this, I'm just gonna explain what my thoughts are and what my feelings are about this. As far as my thoughts on this, as a beginner user or a very novice user, um, I didn't know about the height thing, but now I do, and it's pretty interesting. So I can now figure out how big of a print I want, just depending on how I wanna angle it with the height. That's what determines how long this is gonna take. Uh, in particular, I think it's all SLA printers you can't tell if it's stuck to the build plate until like almost half an hour into the print because that's when it starts lifting out the liquid and you can kind of peek in there so that was a little concerning in my part because i didn't know if it was gonna actually print or not print or i have to redo stuff i'm gonna turn this off as well because i'm done printing and i don't need that extra noise also i was very intimidated at first to be playing around with this but Overall, as long as you know where to handle the liquid and don't get in your uh, face, eyes, and all that other stuff, it's not too bad. So right now, there's like that little filter. I'm just pouring it back in so there's no debris that go back into this liquid because you can always reuse this. All right, next, uh, my thoughts is uh, it prints really high quality. Like this would be good for uh, those little figures like from Monopoly and stuff. That's really good. Jewelry. Stuff like that, this could print in high quality. Uh, gears, stuff that you need like precision. But as far as like big print or mass print, this is slow. I, I thought it was gonna be fast in 3D printing, but it is a very slow printer. Also, this tray has a little notch that 
allows you to pour this out so I'm not having a hard time pouring this out into here I just got to make sure it's slow this way it doesn't overfill past the paper all right as far as cleaning this stuff off I'm figuring that I got to get the liquid out as much as possible then probably wipe it down with alcohol just to keep it clean which that's what I'm going to do next using the software was pretty easy I was just able to load the new model in there and save it and it turns into a file that this thing could read and it was very easy to use I didn't have a problem with that as well and the overall the smell isn't bad I thought the smell was going to be bad but it wasn't bad all right honestly my final thoughts about this uh don't be intimidated by SLA printers they do a really great job like extremely high quality prints let me just grab some alcohol from here um slow but it does really good uh, aligning the bed on this guy was pretty easy um, I thought it was gonna mess up 9,000 times really because it, there wasn't really like a way other than tightening allen screws to to level the bed but now it was actually just push it down tighten the screws and you're done and it was pretty easy I, I had to level the bed twice the first time for the first print that they that I was doing and the second time for this new tinier print and I didn't have a problem leveling the bed at all you're gonna notice I actually am using a tray that's just something I picked up from sexy cyborg and uh, maker muse uh, they use a tray just to keep the liquid in because you don't want this like going all over the place another thing is don't use latex gloves use the um, start to the end I'll put the word up on the screen I can't say it right now because I can't think of it but use that type of material because latex it will still eat through the alcohol and all that stuff will eat through a latex and you won't even feel it or know it so you don't want that happening this one at least has a slower time for it to eat through now uh, one particular thing about this particular printer is that I'm not a big fan of this lid um, I've seen other lids that open up in the front or flip up or opens up from the side the reason why I don't like this lid is because if you're gonna put this on a shelf you need the height to be at least double this just so you could you know remove the lid and while the other ones I could just sh shove into a certain spot and open the door I think that would be a, um, a would have been a better design so if you guys enjoyed this video please hit the like button if you guys got any questions about this machine or something that I didn't answer hit up in the comments below and I'll be sure to test it out like I said earlier as of July this is on a discount so if you are, guys are interested definitely pick it up now I'll leave a link in the description below now if you guys are new to this channel consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out and as I say my nerd cave hack till it hurts